Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And today we're going to be discussing something that I've seen mentioned in the comment section of some of my more recent Pokemon videos. And that is that some of you don't feel like you're going to want to pay full price $59.99 US. At least that's the price where I'm at for the eventual Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl remakes. Game Freak has put out a couple different Pokemon games now on the Nintendo Switch. They first put out Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Those were priced at $59.99, full price. Then they put out Pokemon Sword and Shield pre-DLC, and those cost $59.99 each. Basic, normal price for a first-party or third-party Nintendo game. Now, we're getting two new games. We're getting Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and we're getting Legends Arceus. There's not a question in anybody's mind that Legends Arceus is going to be a full $60, $59.99 retail price. There have been some people who have said, why on earth would Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl be full price? It's not the same as these other games. We're going to discuss that and we're going to delve a little bit into pricing of video games in today's video. And I want to talk about why it's not exactly true that what you're getting in the game itself necessarily is what creates the price. Let's jump right into it. Now, I decided to make this video early. I originally planned on making a video discussing the prices of Pokemon games and more video games in general later in the year once we got closer to the release of some of these titles, but I wanted to make it now before we really had a good idea of the pricing. Now, Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee were $60. Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield were $60, and then it was an additional $25, I believe, for both DLCs, or maybe it was $29.99, which is getting up there in price of 3DS games. Everyone expects Legends Arceus, which is a more ambitious Pokemon game than we've seen recently and one that is more f is further out in terms of a release date to hit that $60 price tag. Nintendo games in general, if it's a Nintendo produced game, if it's a Zelda Breath of the Wild, if it's Super Mario Odyssey, if it's a Pokemon, uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX, these games are full price. They are $59.99 MSRP, $60. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are remakes of old games. They're remakes of Nintendo DS games. Unless I'm forgetting what it was like to be a child, I believe Nintendo DS games sold anywhere from $30 to $40, usually $39.99 or like $34.99 was usually the retail price for these games. So you might ask yourself, if we're getting an up version of a $35 game, why are they charging full price? Why should I pay full price? And I think there's two different ways to look at this. There's your personal consideration here. If you don't have the money, if you really want to play these games, this is a decision that only you can make. These games are going to sell. They're going to sell at whatever price tag they're put at. If they sold this game for $80, I guarantee you they'd sell millions upon millions of copies because people don't necessarily look at what they're playing in the game and then decide this is worth my money. The industry determines a price. The industry looks at what are consumers willing to buy and then they price their games at that margin. And it's a company they're always going to be looking out for their profits. So if they can up that price, if they can increase that price and increase the amount of money that you're giving them for every single purchase of these games, whether it's the game itself or the DLC that comes after it or a special edition or a remaster that comes later to get you to double dip and pay more. They're going to charge whatever they think they can get out of you. These games that are produced by these major uh, video game developers, not necessarily the small developers who might price their games at $10, $20, $30. These big time developers, whether it's Game Freak and Nintendo, or if it's a company like Microsoft or Sony, they're going to charge you whatever they think you're willing to give. There seems to be this narrative among some that they look at the game they developed and they say, what is this game's, uh, how much time does a player get out of this game in comparison to another game that we put out for this same price? They're not going to charge the same amount of money for a massive multi-hundred hour campaign like Breath of the Wild. And they're not going to charge $20 less, $30 less for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, which might be a 15 hour, a 20 hour main series campaign and then an optional post game. They're not going to do that. That's not how these companies determine what they're going to charge you. And specifically for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, these are Nintendo's big 
heavy hitting holiday games as of now. Now that could change in the coming months. We could get at E3 or whatever takes the place of what usually is E3. They're doing a digital event this year. We could get the announcement and the reveal of Breath of the Wild 2, which we've known about for some time now, is releasing at the end of the year. And if that's the case, Nintendo has a, May a first party Nintendo game to sell at the holidays. But Pokemon is always their bigger seller. Pokemon has sold more than Zelda. Pokemon is the most profitable and most successful multimedia franchise on the planet. I believe it's the second best and most selling uh, video game franchise on the planet. I believe behind Mario or Tetris or something to that nature. Something really big. Minecraft's up there too now. They're going to charge whatever the hell they can charge and get you to pay for it. They're not looking at it and saying, oh, well, we developed it in this amount of time and we had this many people working on it and we think we're going to sell this many units so we need to make our, our profits back and our development costs back like this. No, that's not how they do it. They're going to charge what is the standard. The standard for a big Nintendo Switch release, whether it's first party or if it's a port of another game, generally speaking, is $59.99. It's going to be the same for physical and digital, even though it is said that the, dig the physical copies do take a little bit to produce because they're in a different form factor than most uh, physical games are nowadays. They're in cartridges, uh, which is something I don't think we talk about enough with the Switch. That's like a really cool thing that isn't very common. But they're going to charge $59.99. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are going to cost that much. It's your decision if you want to give them $59.99 for it, or if you're one of the people like me who, for some reason, is cathartic in everything in his life and wants to buy both because he's a psychopath, you're going to give them over $100. You're going to give them $120. Bucks. And there's always the chance that there's going to be DLC for these games. That's going to be an extra $20 to $30 you're shelling out. Game prices are, in my opinion, too high. If games were $50, if games were $55, I think we would have a lot less of a discussion constantly. Whenever a new video game gets announced or whenever we see the features or what we're going to be getting from these games, there's always the discussion of, oh, well, how much does this game cost? Is this game worth it? Is this game worth a full $60? Should this have been $40? Should this have been $50? We have that discussion every single time. It's, it's not just with Pokemon games. And we're going to have that discussion with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I'm confident. As we get closer to release, these games aren't really listed on a ton of websites just yet. They're not listed on Amazon yet, even though Legends Arceus is. We're going to get into a discussion of that price, probably around the summer, once we see more of it. Once we see what the full scope of these games are. You know from some of my previous videos, and if you haven't watched them, there'll be a card in the corner right now, that we're going to be we don't really know the full scope of this game yet we don't know if we're going to be getting an expanded list of features we don't know if we're going to be getting every pokemon we don't know if we're going to be getting returning features like mega evolution even though there are a lot of people who think we are we're still in that kind of lull period between reveal and more information coming out post reveal so we're going to know a lot and this is going to develop and that's why this is going to be an ongoing discussion on the channel I want to continue to cover this issue specifically with these games because we're in an interesting spot with Pokemon. We've moved to the Switch. We're fully integrated on the Switch hardware now. We've had multiple releases. We've had a new generation. We've had DLC. We've had side games. We're all there. Everything's been $60 besides the DLC. And Nintendo games historically hold their value. You almost never see Nintendo games drop in price. You can, you're buying Super Mario Odyssey for $60 today, even though it came out in 2017. You're buying Breath of the Wild depending on where you buy it, sometimes for more than $60, but you're not getting it for less unless there's a sale. And Nintendo rarely does sales. Pokemon games in specific hold their value to an insane degree. A lot of DS Pokemon games today are more expensive. One, because they're not really being produced anymore by Nintendo, so what's out there is out there. Even though they're incredibly well-selling games, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, I believe, sold somewhere between 14 and 17 million copies. And those games are selling for upwards of $80 on eBay and other online retailers right now. These games don't drop. These markets only continue to increase. So another thing you're going to have to ask yourself as a, a smart consumer is, if I wait on these games, if I, if I say I don't want to buy these games at release, I don't want to pay full price, you need to ask yourself, is this price going to drop? With some, we've seen it. Let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee. Switch games recent releases what was it 2018 those games came out in november of 2018 those games are almost always being sold nowadays for 
and that's just because of the 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 nature of buy of of market economics the nature of supply and demand those games aren't as in demand as they might have been and the features now that we have an eighth generation aren't as popular so those games are a little bit cheaper but that doesn't always happen with pokemon games so the price of brilliant diamond and shining pearl is going to be interesting i think it's going to be 60. i i think it should be maybe 50 like 49.99 msrp uh but that's not how the video game industry works and unfortunately that's something that us consumers have to deal with now if people didn't want to pay 60 this is the dirty truth if we didn't we wouldn't have to if you had a, a ton of people go to the market and say we don't want to play this game this game is overpriced in theory companies would have to lower their prices to get people to buy their games but that's not the reality we live in. For as much controversy as there was with Sword and Shield's release back in 2019, those games are, I believe, the second best-selling Pokemon games of all time, and they're more expensive than any other Pokemon games had ever been at release. Besides Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Controversy? Maybe controversy sells, maybe it doesn't. But regardless, people want to play these games. Enough people want to play these games to where the what is essentially a smaller minority of people who are uncomfortable with these video game prices either shell out the money regardless because they want to play their Pokemon and there's nothing wrong with that or they're too small of a group to where it doesn't have an impact on the company it doesn't have an impact on the bottom line of anybody and they're still going to sell 10 million plus copies of this game Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl remakes of one of the most popular beloved generations of the franchise they're going to sell like wildfire when these games come out, regardless of the price. They could be $80, like I mentioned before, and they'd sell. So what do you guys think? Do you think they should be $60? Do you think Pokemon games are fairly priced? And do you think video games in general are fairly priced today? Or do you think something needs to change with the market economics of this whole thing? I'd be interested to know what you guys think. And if you guys have not subscribed to the channel yet, that button is below the video. I would really appreciate it. It helps the channel grow, helps me put out more content like this. And also be sure to leave a like and let me know down in the comments some of the stuff I mentioned before. Let's get a discussion going. With that being said, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.